Ooh-wee. Damn, that thing looks clean. What is going on, YouTube? Welcome back to another video. In today's video, we got something I'm super excited about. <laughs> Camera's fun around. Uh, we got something I'm super excited about, and that is we are finally installing an aftermarket doubled in head unit in the G8. I mean, that radio kind of speaks for itself. It's dated, looks dated, and uh, I mean, it's time to move on, 2020. So let's get something with some Apple CarPlay, some navigation, better sound adjustment, and honestly, just a way better radio in there. So this is what we're gonna be installing. And then this, this sweet package right here is the kit we will be using. Before this kit came to market, thanks to Joe Labrezza, if I butchered his name, I mean, I'll live with it. Uh, he imported all these over from Australia. So over in Australia, there's actually a version of this called Holden Commodore uh, VE, I believe. And then uh, the GT specifically, I believe is the SSV. Anyways, there's a company over there called AeroPro, and they make a bunch of good uh, aftermarket kits and stuff so that you can swap the radio out of them. But there was two issues. Well, one's not really an issue, it's just a thing for us here in the States. Uh, but the main issue was that since their steering wheel is located on the other side of the car, the dual climate control was flipped. So anytime you'd be adjusting your side, which side you'd be sitting on, so move your right hand over, turn the knob, you would actually be adjusting the passenger side air temperature uh, for the car. But anyways, so they finally changed up the software on that to suit the Pontiac G8. It's still in Celsius, which was the other thing, but honestly, that's no big deal. I don't really care. Cold is cold, hot is hot. But um, this just retains a lot more of an OE factory look. Plus, it has a USB pass-through, which is super clean and will look really nice for the Apple CarPlay. And uh, I've already pulled out the packages just to check the condition of both of these. But without further ado, let's hop into the unboxing. Alright guys, so we switched to the good old head cam. We're going to be opening up the uh, VE install kit first so this is what the fascia is what all the wiring is and basically what's going to allow us to even have a spot to put the aftermarket radio so if we go in here and check this bag out this is the new radio mount uh, so basically what happens once the fascia kit is installed this goes on either side of the radio and then there's a tab on either side that slots into place when you push the radio in and the interesting thing about this kit too is not only was it much cheaper than our alternative option, uh, and personally, in my opinion, it looks a lot nicer. Um, the good thing about this is this can, retains factory steering wheel controls right out the box. Uh, you will have to do some wiring because it's meant for an aftermarket radio, so you gotta wire the aftermarket radio up, which is nothing new. Um, and then we might end up having to break open the uh, uh, instruction manual for me to tell you what these two harnesses are because I'm not positive I know that this is the radio antenna setup. Uh, I don't know what the other one is. I think it's the steering wheel control wiring uh, But anyways right here is where you got all your normal radio speaker wires They've actually damn they've labeled these really nicely and they actually have inline fuses. Wow And then this is the factory plug connector that you'll wire into the aftermarket radio Oh, okay. This plug goes to the fascia itself to do all the, uh, what was I going to say? Oh, to do all the uh, climate control, I believe. So we'll take these and set them off over to the side. Uh, this kit does come with a colored, very detailed instruction uh, packet. So that's going to make the install a lot easier since on this type of setup where the climate control is built into the radio it actually is fairly complicated versus like it was for the vibe where all that's separate so as you can see right here 
try and get this bag off safely. This is, yeah, let's just grab the extra stuff out of here so I can get the box that way. This is the fascia plate to cover up the kit. Radio, or uh, wiring diagram, install kit. I'll go ahead and toss all this out. So this right here is the new climate control setup. And why I like this so much more is one, it retains the two physical knobs where the other kit only had a touch screen that was probably about maybe that big. And it was strictly touch. Plus, it also has the USB pass-through included, which will make it look even more factory when I get the Apple CarPlay set up on the radio. Uh, these are soft touch buttons on either side. Uh, and then they're, uh, the knobs feel really uh, quality made. And they you can also, I believe, tap and hold. And I think that splits up the climate control zone, but I don't know, there's a lot of cool things that you can do with this. Uh, one of the other people that have already installed theirs actually said that you're able to set up your steering wheel controls to control the temperature uh, both in dual and single zone setup. And then right here is the instruction manual which I'll get into more as I actually go to install. You do have to do a first time setup with it. Um, this is similar to how uh, my radio is going to end up looking. So without further ado, let's jump into unboxing the radio. Okay, so here we have the Pioneer NEX AVH 2400 NEX. So basically I picked this radio for two reasons. One, I really like the look. Uh, two, the functionality seems very in-depth. And three, I had Apple CarPlay. Now there is a version of this called the 2440 EX, uh, and the only difference between that is high definition radio, which personally I don't think I'll be missing. Uh, right here, you have the radio's wiring harness. I believe this is their warranty. Yep, limited warranty. Uh, quick start guide for all these models and then installation manual for this model. So, let's go ahead and slide this on out. The thing I also like is that this does come with a Bluetooth, uh, well it said Bluetooth, but uh, basically an external microphone so that radio quality can be crystal clear when you're talking with somebody. Uh, this here is an extension for the radio's USB port for Apple CarPlay or Android Auto. And then these are all the screws uh, to use with the radio. And then if we go ahead and pop this apart, this here is the radio itself. Another thing that I really like about this radio is on top of the fact of it being really clean, once I uh, have it installed, I'll show you but you can actually go into the settings and this screen is able to tilt up or down. And then it'll slide out of the way and it reveals a CD player that's back there. And while CDs are rather dated, uh, I think it's really cool to just have one. It makes it seem OEM-ish. Um, so without further ado, now we can get to the fun stuff and actually start uh, tearing apart the car's interior. Alright guys, so we got the instruction kit out. Uh, I have already gathered all the listed supplies. However, I do just want to point out quick, and I'll confirm later in the video. Uh, step number four says a cordless drill with a 3 8 inch drill bit. The hole is not 3 8 That is actually quite large. Uh, and I believe it just needs to be... Uh, the size of the hole in the fascia for a screw that will be mounted down here. Uh, like I said, we'll find out later in the video if that is indeed correct or incorrect, but just off initial uh, impressions, I don't believe it needs to be a 3 8 inch. Uh, so we're just going to follow this step by step. I'm going to keep the head cam on and uh, I'll update you guys on any particularly uh, tricky spots and then 
we'll get this old radio out and we'll get the new one in so without further ado let's hop to it So just a quick midway through it update. Uh, I'm gonna switch away from the head strap because I feel like honestly some of that footage didn't get the best angle because I could feel the camera like touching the dash or something. So I switched back over to the uh, tripod. So just a quick update. Got both side panels removed, glove box removed, the face of this removed. You have to pull pretty hard to get the face of the radio to pop out. Like, I was surprised. I felt like I was gonna break it. I was pulling so hard, but uh, it all came out in one piece. It just has some very heavy duty clips. Um, and then there's four screws 
in each corner. I got all those out. Uh, I already disconnected the radio antenna and the power wiring. Um, so just also a quick update. Uh, this, this instruction manual is insanely helpful. However, um, some of the instructions are incorrect as far as wiring loom location, like the antenna is on the left side of the radio. Um, so you need to do everything that is stated for the passenger side to disconnect that and then everything that's stated for the driver's side uh, you have to do that on our passenger side uh, apart from that everything else is correct so I just wanted to give you guys a quick update and we're gonna keep busting at it so let's keep going
All right, guys, and here we are hours later. Uh, it is now 12.45, I believe. I started this somewhere in the neighborhood of 8 or 9 o'clock. Um, so, my the things that I didn't like most about this kit is only two things. Uh, the first off being having to drill it's dark down there, I'm not 100% that you guys can see it, is that there's a screw right here. And basically you have to drill into the plastic that's back there so that uh, the fascia is secured at the bottom. Good idea. I don't mind drilling the hole. The only issue is it's very difficult to get to. I tried moving the shifter all the way out of the way, uh, over into sport, all the way over into downshift, and I could not fit a normal drill in there properly uh, and as a result I actually damaged the hole there a bit uh, actually accidentally drilled below it so I you could basically slide a screw in and out now because uh, I damaged it from the hole below it and got rid of the material below it so there's nothing to hold the screw except for just pressure um, and then the other one being that it just took a really long time to get the radio mounted this flush. Now, this isn't uh, necessarily AeroPro's fault uh, because all aftermarket radios are gonna mount differently. They're all gonna have different mounting holes. They're all gonna be different sizes uh, as far as the radio box on the backside is concerned. Um, so that kind of sucked. Had to do that for like 20 minutes until I got it to where it is right now. But. At the end of the day, I would do this time and time and time and time again. Just over the factory radio, this is so much nicer. And then, I don't know, I just I just like this way more. I do think I forgot to plug the radio antenna in. Not a big deal. Might go back uh, whenever I install a reverse camera and fix that. Um, the good news is if I ever go to install the reverse cam, all I gotta do is try to get this fascia safely off, uh, and then pop the radio back out and I can do everything right from there. I don't gotta disassemble the glove box and pull the side panels off and drop everything underneath the steering wheel and all that. Oh, and then something really cool. So I might've messed something up or forgot to wire something in because I can't use my volume button on the radio and I think this radio is compatible with that I'm not 100% certain but anyways uh, if you tap this button once and then if you look down here a little steering wheel icon lights up and I can control fan speed and if you tap it again oh wait. Oh, okay. There it is. So it'll do fan speed when it's in single zone, and then each side will do temperature when it's in dual zone. Which, honestly, is pretty friggin' sweet. And then, to go back, all you gotta do is, I believe... Yeah. This one. Nope. Hold it. Oh, no, that's AC. <laughs> okay, I'm still learning. Okay, so hold, depressing this button and holding it turns AC on and off. Tapping it is which uh, vent it's coming out of. You tap this one, it goes into auto climate control. Tap it again to bring it out. And then if you hold it, it goes back to single zone temperature. So that's pretty interesting in single zone. Uh, that little steering wheel icon right there. You see that pop up? If you scroll down, you can actually do fan speed. Which, honestly, I I love the the fascia kit more than anything. Uh, it looks OEM. It's very well made. It interacts with the steering wheel, which is just honestly crazy to me. I didn't even know that was a thing. And then uh, it just looks very aesthetically pleasing. The ha hazard button's still in the same spot. Works like factory. Uh, all the button feels are very nice. The knobs have a nice, uh, 
what's the word? I don't know, you can feel the click and then all the touches on this is super responsive. I didn't realize it, but the touch, uh, the buttons on the left and the right are actually touch buttons. I thought they were just a very soft key and nope, they're touch. Which, honestly, that's crazy. That's super nice. And then you switch between recirculation and uh, bringing the air inside from outside the vehicle right there. Uh, I do got to read into it a little more because I believe this climate control actually has different modes. Like I saw, I was quickly glancing at them and I saw one and it's called a pollution filter or something where it basically swaps between outside air and cabin air. I don't know. Uh, so I'm going to look into that more and then if I see anything cool, I'll let you guys know and we'll do a quick closeout. So catch you guys in a minute. All right, so I look back through the pamphlet and that pollution mode, uh, what it does is if you enable it, you press and hold the recirculation button for five seconds and then it'll make an audible noise to let you know that it did it. And then there'll be a little car icon with an A on it. And what that does is it actually switches back and forth between outside air and recirculating cabin air um, so that at low speeds and stuff, it's not sucking any exhaust fumes or anything back into the cabin and just holding them in there basically, uh, which I think is pretty cool. Tesla had something similar uh, because I remember somebody mentioning it when all the California fires were going on, how um, HVAC system, you were able to do something to basically filter that thick smoke air a lot better. But if you guys like today's video, if you have any questions, um, if you want to see something specific, make sure to drop a comment below. Other than that, like, subscribe, and I will catch you guys in the next one. Peace out.